means this tool is available on the site. You can go check it out. Uh, videos, the tool is free. You can go generate music. Lots of fun. Make sure you have a GPU. You might need the GPU. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I did test it on my laptop. It's just slow. Uh, it still works, but uh, just much slower. So you can't move uh, too fast on the screen with your hands. So keep that in mind. It's on the JavaScript on the front end, so there's no uh, server in this case. This one should be simple, just load it. It might ask you for like a camera a permission to use. And uh, Bob's your uncle, it's not sending any footage to the cloud. Uh, this is front end, just using your local camera. The footage stays on your own machine, but the quality of the you know, of how it works will depend on your browser and the computer and the like. And let's jump back to the main site. We also have this ECG EG to music converter. I don't know if you should I convert, try and convert ECG into music. Um, it's probably be more like a tooth tooth uh, type of stuff. So, um, yeah, don't expect it to to do much. There is an ECG signal generator on the side, a uh, one that you can actually change things. The BPM from 40 to 140. If you feel like stressed, don't know why the irrelevant ads on my site. Hopefully, it will be ideal. There will be someone, you know, a cardiologist <laughs> advertising <laughs> their services. Do you need a surgery? So, I'll we'll start development uh, in a second. We want to release a bunch uh, of uh, new tools on the site for you to play with and watch some ads. Yeah, this one you can already play with uh, yourself, but uh, we'll have another version that we're currently working on where you play against the robot. And yeah, it's a bit like chess. <laughs> you stand no chance. Uh, but uh, yeah, but we're actually trying to show uh, how it behaves when the noise in the signal is increased. Yeah, so then the with increased noise, the robot might uh, not be doing so well anymore. But uh, the human still might, mm, maybe, probably not. What else? We got some feature extraction, with, which yeah, we'll need more. A work on those currently just shows you a difference between uh, these uh, three detect common commonly used detector types fast Harris she Tomasi you can see for this image how it uh, uh, what it detects so obviously the fast is not uh, working very well it's pretty much detecting anything under the Sun maybe that's what you want a uh, Harris pointing out a few uh, regions um, that is kind of focusing more on addition to this tool will be an ROI selection, a region of interest selection where you put a square and it finds uh, you know stuff of interest uh, using that algorithm specifically in a certain region. So uh, let me know if interested we can work on that or maybe you already done it. Send me send me the link and uh, she Thomas is kind of similar to Harris. It's not much difference. The labels are smaller, so it's kind of just looks different, but it's actually, it might be a doing the same. I know it's like missing that point there. I don't know if it's important or not, probably not. And here you can select a different uh, image. What is it? The ischemic stroke. I don't know what the stroke is, but ideally, the idea is that it will actually, well, you'll have to help it because in this case you have a lot of the bone in the image, so it will obviously, uh, you know, get confused. Yeah, the hair is just focusing on that bit there. Uh, you will actually have to indicate a smaller region of interest, like here or there, or compare the two or something, and it will uh, focus on those. Uh, what else we've got? We've got a bunch of blogs that were written by GPT-4, so beware, bot alert. It actually says so in the 
at the bottom of which um, uh, blog it says that the uh, images and text were generated using DALL-E E3 a beta version at the time, I don't know if there is a better better one now and the uh, GPT-4 via the chat open AI yeah, to check by any chaos and you have any thoughts to let me know which tool have you used, how I can improve it we are combining fuzzy logic with the ECG game Let's just open another um, Visual Studio Code. Yeah, I'm doing the Cardio Quest port. The Flask application is essentially just Flask, and then it's uh, importing functions from another two Python files. One called ECG processing, and the other one is uh, called Fuzzy Analysis. So you can guess uh, what are they doing. The ECG processing has a process data function, calculate R peak sharpness, and that makes sense, detecting peaks, uh, calculating intervals, and fuzzy analysis has this very long uh, fuzzy logic analysis function that has all the membership functions in it. So we're currently looking at this. I'll run the thing so you can actually see what is it uh, talking about. Yeah, so this is the main function that plays the game. It's currently got a, a doing not so well. A, even with minimal noise, it's the te it's um, labeling everything as a not normal, abnormal ECG waveform, which is not great. We can still play the game ourselves. Assuming you are human, I don't know, let me know if you are. And then uh, the machine using fuzzy logic, which currently works really well. So if I restart the page and reduce the noise, yeah, it got one false alarm because it was an abnormal uh, waveform and it's labeled it as, uh, no, sorry, it was a normal waveform, it's labeled it as abnormal, therefore the one false alarm and the human is not paying attention as per usual so not doing great so i'm really lagging lagging behind uh, this one is a uh, normal ecg waveform so i did not click on it same again and i get extra 10 points there are like three normals in a row which is a bit unusual four normals in a row it's highly unusual Okay, that's an abnormal. Yeah, and the bot with no noise is just doing absolutely uh, awesome. As in, not making any mistakes. So, if uh, unless we add some noise to the mix, the bot will be winning by miles because uh, the game also becomes faster. Every 50 points, the speed of the scroll window uh, increases slightly so once we get to about like thousand points or so it becomes super fast and the human is out the door can be resting just watching the robot doing their job but so far i'm still keeping up kind of but what i wanted to show you is that if you add a little bit of noise to the system like now the robot might start doing mistakes. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, it's already mislabeling stuff. It's essentially in this case uh, with this minimal amount of noise, it's already labeling everything as a uh, abnormal ECG waveform, and it's already got up to uh, six false alarms. It's essentially every time you had a normal ECG like here, it's uh, labeling is it as not normal and uh, that's obviously a false uh, false alarm. What is it called? False. Uh, um, it's a false negative. Yeah. Oops. I clicked on something that I shouldn't have as well. So the human is not paying attention, and the robot starts making mistakes once you have even a slight uh, noise introduced in the in the signal. Uh, yesterday we were getting this uh, error that for one of the waveforms no that just does uh, starting that for one of the 
a waveforms waveforms we had no fuzzy rule being uh, met and it throws out this uh, well it's really a warning but uh, yeah it, it, it's called an, an, an error but we don't see that anymore because so we actually got the uh, gpt4 to adjust the membership functions for us just slightly so it doesn't happen it didn't really know the context i mean it did know the context it didn't know like the specific of what needs to be done uh, essentially we had to go over this uh, membership functions and rules uh, multiple uh, multiple times so we essentially i can go over it quickly again or we'll just get the robot to do it maybe with the waveform uh, generation uh, javascript code we eventually not right now but we would like to add more uh, types of uh, different uh, waveforms with uh, different abnormality levels if you have any suggestions as to uh, which ones i should include do let me know okay this is the game uh, logic itself this is what does um, you can explain what it does uh, but generally it does all the calculation of uh, scores and displaying stuff on the screen now we would like to display everything the fuzzy logic algorithm does so essentially on the front page we would like to show all of this now this is the flask uh, application code a uh, python script uh, we would like to we, we already have uh, about uh, 10 or so flask applications published on our website slash server we would like to add this one as well should have some instructions written somewhere as to how to do it uh, quick and easy now this is the ecg uh, processing essentially pre-processing of the data before the fuzzy logic analysis uh, just keep in mind we don't want to do any filtering so no filtering we would like the fuzzy logic algorithm to see exactly what the human player sees on the screen and uh, this is the main uh, uh, python code that does the fuzzy analysis if you can uh, briefly explain what it does that would be great keep it short light if you want to be funny if you feel like being funny uh, go for it but keep it on the topic of discussion also mention unit testing yeah of course it was yeah so i don't know what happened uh, it just uh, happened recently just today essentially that uh, the it kept saying the message uh, you submitted is too long please reload the conversation and submit something shorter so it's quite uh, unusual let's pop it into info because we don't currently have one also need requirements in the requirement file as well so yeah it's 900 lines of uh, prompt i thought it can handle it i'm pretty sure it was able to handle it i'm not just saying because um because essentially originally what was happening is that we were uh, hitting the 40 messages per three hour limit all the time um and yes there was a suggestion somewhere that we should just do longer prompts let's control f5 this and uh, try it again i'm pretty sure something have changed in the model let's try three a uh, 3.5 where's the information bit so they they added that memory memory component uh, no, that's different that's an overlay ah there it is yeah i had that most recent change Sorry for that yeah might have to restart the browser or something yeah anyway 
not just saying i'm pretty sure it was working uh, before let's try like 500 lines we'll try this and then uh, uh, do a uh, one file at a time nope okay yeah memory blah 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 don't really understand the point of having those gpts they're essentially doing the same uh, stuff as uh, a gpt4 itself can so what's the point okay let's do it them in a different order so obviously the order will matter so essentially on the front panel you have your analysis result the number of positive negative peaks row amplitude a uh, peak sharpness r peak sharpness well the r peak is actually assuming the tallest peak in the current waveform Yes, you can imagine one of the problems with this uh, type of analysis is that we don't have continuous uh, ECG scrolling. We have one P, Q, R, S, D wave coming at a time. So we don't have, for example, uh, the distance between uh, R peaks. We only have a PR interval, which is really messy. Those values are incorrect when there is a noise in the signal. It's essentially finding way to many uh, peaks that's also why the detection isn't working yeah that's something we have more of an interest uh, fixing no so instead of that yeah don't worry about that it's not what that number is it doesn't really matter it's just not zero so when the noise level is uh, not zero the these two a positive and uh, negative peaks are correct however this is uh, wrong i think because it's finding too many uh, too many uh, peaks yeah i want to go over this that's the one we want to improve i think it's more to do with how the pr and rt intervals are being calculated essentially what's happening is that when we have too many peaks found in the case of a slightly elevated noise that um, interval calculation is uh, not actually looking at the correct peaks the reason I'm mentioning that positive peak and negative peak uh, number is correct is because we actually applying some sort of thresholding that doesn't allow for too many negative and positive peaks being detected. Uh, can you have a look at the code? So we are uh, we changed when we say we is uh, well, kind of me just a bit but mainly gpt4 and github copilot i need to see a correct rejection now those numbers still seem to be too low go over this stuff one by one try in a noise condition those pr intervals are way too low okay that one hundred because that number should just make sense so it essentially means that if uh, the noise caused too many peaks to be detected in a short succession they will not be taken into account yeah this code essentially says if there's more than one peak that code is actually not correct and i was uh, modifying the wrong bit it's actually this bit here so if uh, the number of peaks is more than one which in this case yeah, the current problem that we're trying to solve is that these numbers are too low. What these numbers should be is, uh, yeah, if we remove the noise, yeah, those numbers make sense. So 0.4 and 0.3, it's uh, the distance before and after the R peak to the next peak, or if there was no peak to the beginning of the waveform. So those uh, numbers are correct. Problem is when we have noise introduced, the, those intervals are not being calculated correctly. Yeah, I don't know where uh, GitHub Copilot again 
a main suggestion, but uh, not sure what it actually did that introduces prominences, but then it's not actually using it. So we might revert uh, back to previous code while well, considering what it suggested. It didn't do much uh, difference at all. Uh, can we go over this code essentially line by line and uh, make uh, suggestions as to how to change it so that when there is a a little bit of noise introduced the br and rt intervals are still calculated correctly currently the numbers are way too small because it's essentially looking at the uh, uh, peaks that are too close that were labeled when uh, there is noise in the waveform yeah we need to change a uh, calculate intervals uh, function yeah, there are definitely some uh, issues uh, with the site. Yeah, is this, that's just how little I know about ECG. Uh, it's working with uh, EEG before. But is it uh, just pulling my leg or there is this Ben Tompkins algorithm for QRS detection? Algorithm is a real time QRS detection algorithm. It's widely used for its effectiveness in the ECG signal processing. Here's a simplified version. Um, okay, pop it into GPT, GPT quickly. There's a problem with that code though. I need it in the context of the whole code. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, we now have uh, can the, the detect QRS should in theory be a detect QRS function is not available. However, we do have the pen uh, Tompkins uh, function. Any suggestions to actually check if that uh, Ben Tompkins thing is legit or not? So let's have all these magic numbers. Well, at least we know it exists. Why those are not the uh, clickable links? Sometimes they are. Once you once you've seen it, you cannot see it, can you? Now you expect them to be links, but they are not. I wonder if it's just not working properly on uh, Linux. Any chance we can actually remove the sampling rate at all? We're looking at a certain number of data points within a certain uh, uh, waveform. Let's see if it understands. No, we're not concerned with the actual uh, uh, sampling rate. Yeah, we'll get rid of it. And in the Ben Tompkins. Yeah, but don't worry about the sampling rate at the moment. Well, just because, just take my word for it. Trust me, I'm an engineer. What is it they say? Yeah, we still uh, need the window width. But we're getting rid of the sampling rate. Okay, we need another input here, don't we? Yeah, 100 sounds fine. Okay, it's not actually called waveforms called the uh, NP data just adding window width there and the actual number frequencies the difference between those two I don't know so let's just run this code maybe the window width uh, should be larger yeah copilot it's mostly messing up my stuff and there's uh, simply there is currently something wrong uh, with uh, GPT-4 on the website okay we want to leave all the code the same and only change the calculate intervals function so currently when there is some noise in the signal the PR and RT intervals are way too small because there's too many peaks being detected can you look at the code again so in process data function we do have a median calculation and a prominence value are we using it when 
calculating intervals uh, any chance we can move that uh, prominence and median calculation bit of the code and the minimum distance as well shall we move it into the detect px function so that when we are calculating intervals it is being taken into account so we are not looking at too many peaks in the presence of noise okay so we're moving so you just need to well not just we will stuff up the whole code but the idea is uh, currently what's happening is that when there is a noise present in the signal when there is no noise it's working fine when there is some noise present then uh, the PR and RT infos are way too low and this is because uh, it's actually calculating distance between uh, uh, two uh, consecutive uh, peaks that were generated by the noise and we do not want that the peak detection here the number of peaks it's still working fine even if you do have noise and this is because we're doing this uh, prominence so we're finding median and uh, doing a prominence value of it by multiplying it, multiplying it by 10 so we want to do the same thing so that the detect peaks a function is uh, using it it's not the whole function is it it's returning peaks and properties it should be fine and in the tech peaks essentially remains the same so i'm not sure why it even changed it uh, do we need to change the process data function remove the median mad and prominence value parts of the code so in this case it doesn't actually use before everything else i suspect remains the same getting here is only some of the time right the pr intervals now seem much better they even look legit yes you would expect a small uh, a variation to it because of the noise present but uh, those calculations should roughly be the same as when there is no noise in the signal still generated a false alarm that's obviously abnormal that's fine have another abnormal now we want to see if for a normal ecg like this it's still generating 0.6 which is not correct but at least the pr interval numbers are a closer to what they should be or what they are when there's no noise and they can just have to make sense right still getting one error in one of the conditions i uh, have to fix that i think this is something uh copilot yeah keep mentioning yeah i just should stop saying copilot or gpt whatever the bot so the bots are doing something go figure uh, what is it they are doing <laughs> it seems like you're getting close to where you need to be with the ecg data process well yeah actually we are uh, thank you for saying that i just hope that's the one uh, giving me an abnormal result when the ecg wave is uh, obviously normal well how about they won't be none to begin with so then i don't have to check for it do i one good thing we can do is actually upload those images so we have one uh, the first one is um, abnormal ecg and the next one the second image is a normal ecg waveform that is being misclassified it's finding an extra negative peak in it the raw amplitude seem legit r peak sharpness is okay a pr and rt intervals are fine but the abnormality score is still too high I suspect it's because of that negative peak and that uh, comes up as two instead of one obviously yep 
Yeah, because the if we have two negative peaks, the current membership function uh, defines this, uh, it as being too many. That's why we get abnormal ECG. So if it's a genuine mistake, we can take it. We can um, uh, make the rules a bit, uh, you know, less uh, stringent. However, we want to just fix it because it's, uh, it should be obvious to the bot that this is uh, one uh, negative peak instead of uh, the two that it's uh, counting. And I'm pretty sure if we reduce the noise to zero, it's working fine. So this suggests that uh, yeah, the intervals between the peaks are, let's keep saying negative peaks too. It's always like one more than it should be. No, it's one in this case, which is correct. That's obviously abnormal. But then it's uh, many times showing um, two when we don't even have a case for two. So we need to fix that. That uh, should not be happening. So in this case, we should have had just uh, one instead of two. Yeah, we need to fix the negative peak uh, detection. Something is wrong, even if there is no noise in the signal. The first uh, image that I uploaded, it's detecting two negative peaks when there should be none, it should be zero. And in the second case, it's uh, still detecting two negative peaks when the image clearly shows just one. And here's the relevant code again. Is this GPT-4? This can't be GPT-4. <laughs> this is BS. I can't believe it. Uh, what on earth? What do you mean you don't have? What? Which LLM model is currently being used? So what? Yes, obviously, the GPT-4 can um, look at the images. This is why I'm paying for this, is what's happening there. Why in the website is playing up? I don't like it. Can you edit this, but not that? Just gives me random errors. Can't do it without the images. That's important, isn't it? That's what you care about. It's synthetic data. Don't don't you worry. Okay, so there is one negative peak here, which is correct. Then there is two for whatever reason. Two again. And this one is the same. No, it's the normal, which is also getting two. And that's why uh, because of this negative peaks of two, which is a mistake by the machine, this um, Waveform is being classified as abnormal. It's uh, okay. Hopefully, you can see these four images. Uh, the first one is detecting one negative peak correctly. However, the other three, including the last one, which is a normal ECG waveform, for some reason showing two negative peaks instead of just one yep please don't tell me oh come on oh <laughs> really they do all have the same name well why not fix the interface so when you upload files they have different names that sound like a good idea can you try again Come on. <laughs> Are you kidding? There's something really wrong with GPT-4. Its context got reduced from a gazillion to nothing. And give me specific stuff to my code. If not, I'm not interested. <laughs> Did this CEO get, get kicked out of uh, the company again? Make it forgetting context. So getting this error as well. Can you give a summary of the whole application, what it does, the code, 
uh, what files do we have the name of the files and uh, how are they structured together in the one uh, application what type of application is it right when we uploaded the processing pie which is fine step one we want to modify already have that uh, there is a problem with the way the negative peaks are being calculated in the example image the number should have been uh, zero let's uh, split uh, those uh, functions and do a detect tips doing the same stuff if it's doing the same stuff then there's what's the point there's some sort of basic error someone is probably screaming at me can you generate the code that's not what's called is it a uh, find peaks fix this takes forever <laughs> no <laughs> no no uh, cool. i'll call it now a uh, detect negative peaks i'll have two separate uh, functions that's fine don't need that because it's the same as positive peaks in this case we need to place that we have default uh, uh, values so in theory it should just uh, work no it won't we need a better function than this we can do better uh, we need a better function than that as uh, something uh, more similar to detect peaks but for the detect negative peaks we might use a different prominence value would that help it would because I don't know where that error is coming from because I don't actually have that variable anymore screaming at me. Can you fix this? Can I get a different error? I actually get the calculations. Still gives me two negative peaks for when there should be just one. But now we have uh, two separate functions, like the minimum. Right, there's one now, but there was always one. It should be one as well. Go figure. Something silly that I'm doing is still getting two negative peaks being calculated instead just the one, like in the examples in the images I just uploaded. Yeah, this one might uh, stuff up my uh, processing, but we'll give it a go. So this, this uh, values are default, but then uh, where's the function actually being used over here? Yeah, it's not actually being used. That's okay. You can leave it as that or put an underscore there. It should not matter. Let's test this again. No, it's still wrong. We'll need to do more troubleshooting. Yeah, this will mess up our uh, Flask application should not be doing this right so it's finding two peaks here and there so we'll keep doing it whatever yeah i knew this well yeah here it's finding two peaks so obviously when they are zero okay i think the simplest solution will be just uh, not uh, label anything as negative peak if its y amplitude is zero is this the full function though let's assume so there's no uh, immediate uh, errors that's good it's not working yeah the gui why do we do the plotting business okay commented this out yeah after a few errors it's actually running and it's now indicating the correct number of negative peaks yay no oh come on <laughs> why is it two again should have been zero for this what well okay because it's not exactly zero it's uh, let's see if it's working okay when we have no noise the one it's good hey can you explain the prominence factor how does that work Okay, I know what the problem uh, is. 
might be. Hey, here's the code again. We're looking at the specific uh, window size. It's actually working now. I haven't changed anything. You just have to go away. Come back. Yeah, the abnormality score for normal ECG before was uh, 0 0.1, now it's 0 0.3. That's fine, I think. That's normal again. Let's see when we add noise. Some sort of weird thing. I can have this as underscore. And uh, don't actually need those because we have them as the uh, default uh, values. Yeah, we'll check what the prominence is. Let's print those quickly. Yeah, I want to filter out the peaks with zero amplitude, obviously. It's still finding that negative peak. That's the problem. Uh, why is that happening? It's a bit weird. I don't remember setting it up to be to do that. Yeah, the GUI outside the main thread thread will likely to fail. So that's why the plot is not working anymore. Uh, okay, that's unfortunate. I have to comment it out. It seemed to only work the first the first time around. Can I clear it? Hey, can we clear the plot to begin with? The figure. Can we clear the figure before it's being plotted? Clearing. I still get that very close to zero negative peak being uh, labeled as a peak where it should not be. Only the second one in this case should have been labeled. See image attached. Yeah, that GUI doesn't work properly. We start the app. I think the plotting uh, might have stuffed things up. Why did prominence? Yeah, obviously the, the prominence factor should have been larger. All right, that's one. Now zero. So I have to fine tune it this way. How is it even possible? Something wrong. There's something wrong with that uh, prominence factor. Hey, can we double check the code? The uh, problem with it is if I increase it, then I start getting errors. And if I leave it at uh, 5, at what it is, um, I get uh, two negative peaks uh, when there should be only one. And here's the code again. Uh, no, no, don't do that. First, we need to re re uh, reduce the number of uh, numbers after the decimal point because obviously this calculation is too heavy for anyone to manage then why the prominence factor doesn't just work let's remove that printing for a sec yeah I think I know what the problem is I only use a percentage of uh, mean max I think we need to replace a uh, median uh, with something else uh, probably not mean but maybe it should be we should be using uh, the absolute uh, uh, distance between minimum and maximum between maximum and minimum or whatever if you can make any suggestions that will be great essentially the problem is that we are getting the measurement for negative peaks incorrect. It's um, giving us uh, two peaks when there should be just uh, one. Okay, I think it's just I think we just fixed it by increasing the minimum distance to one thousand. So it actually works now with minimum noise. So we get point three one five nine for normal ECG as an abnormality score it seems to be working correctly now but uh, any suggestions as to how to improve the code are more than welcome yeah we've reached the cap that's why i was originally trying to put in longer prompts so we don't hit the limit it's just annoying actually thinking and stopping uh, paying for it it's kind of the problem is that it's uh, inconsistent so i get what it's doing yeah, I can handle hallucinations or whatever. Well, hallucinations are actually uh, 
sometimes considered creativity when someone hallucinates that might be thought by someone else as being creative so that's a highly subjective whatever thing i'm just annoyed by the user interface like that limit the 40 messages per three hours probably should start uh, try the uh, using the api instead see in terms of cost what difference does it make but then you don't get access to um Dali. like i mean it will be separate and i think those prompts are a uh, very expensive and pop this into obviously this would not work yet that's, that's what i thought yeah like things like this i mean it's a paid service i mean like come on there's just something wrong on this site as well control 5 3.5 can you handle a long prompt like this? It did, it did one uh, error there, but was doing okay until now. And then it generated yeah, two errors, almost one after the other. So now back to GPT 3.5 because I hit the limit. That's actually fine. Okay, so the good, the good uh, news is that it's now. Oops. Yeah, I should have clicked. Shouldn't have clicked on that. That the machine, the bot, the fuzzy logic algorithm is uh, now doing better uh, even when there is noise present. So that would be a correct rejection there. And this would be, oh, it shouldn't have been uh, normal. And now all of a sudden it keeps uh, giving errors. Uh, we have to. So we're trying to improve it uh, when working with noise as well. So when there is no noise, it's kind of no brainer. It's doing really well. So that's abnormal. That's correct. That should be normal. That's correct. An abnormality score of 0.3. Pretty sure it used to be lower for normal ECG. But 0.3 is okay. As long as it's not going above uh, 0.33 or something. 0.31. It's correct so that's uh, working okay for when there is no noise my question is what happens when we add some uh, noise to the mix and straight away yeah we're getting this 0.32 it's being classified as abnormal so it's essentially sitting there on the threshold of being normal or abnormal yeah because that value is uh, way too close to a uh, third so that's a problem yeah, and that one that had the missing uh, negative peak was also misclassified. Uh, yeah, so we will yeah we'll probably release this tool for you to play with, um, even though there are some obvious problems. That's just the way it is, uh, especially when uh, noise is present in the signal. So that's kind of what we're trying to show anyway. Yeah, this one. This uh, negative peak there should have been zero. Negative peak there should have been zero. And it's still uh, indicated one. So that's not good. Someone's asking what kind of waves are this? I'm learning about the uh, Fourier series. Okay, we do have FFT. Do we have FFT? Uh, we shouldn't, we should not have FFT. In this case, we would have it in another in another tool on the website. Um, yes, yeah, so you go check out uh, bionicus.com. This is for all these general questions that what the answer would be. Unfortunately, or fortunately, um, we have. Oops. Yeah. Go study at. Yeah, I don't know what the ad was. It's not sponsored <laughs> by, by that university. Yeah, we kind of don't have a tool specifically covering FFT, but FFT is everywhere. So there would be FFT somewhere in there. We do have some uh, real, um, so a lot of it is uh, synthetic uh, waveforms that you can check out everything you need to know about synthetic waveforms we also have real waveforms so this is uh, yeah there will be fft in here 
for sure. Uh, this is the uh, EG data in time frequency domain. And uh, yeah, go buy was it a whoop? No, don't buy the whoop. I didn't. I heard someone. Uh, I mean, it's it's probably fine. I have one of those breaking as well. I can't talk to it. Like, I mean, it's still working, but I can't uh, connect uh, to it using my phone. Uh, we, by the way, we'll be finishing in six minutes. Uh, so if you have any more questions, now it's a good time. Uh, the six minutes is because we're reaching a four hour mark and uh, LinkedIn doesn't allow uh, streams longer than four hours. So it's forcing me a break. Same as uh, GPT-4. It's forcing me a break as well. I oh, know it's working again. Yeah, it's actually not. Gen I don't know why it's refusing. Sometimes it's keen on uh, generating code. Other times it's like not generating any whatsoever. And I keep asking it to either generate code or uh, write prompts for GitHub Copilot to do it. But uh, it forgets like now. Anyway, so this, this tool on the side will definitely have an uh, FFT in it. And there is the same tool that actually can play, can turn this stuff into music. So it's essentially the same tool, but uh, you also have an option to listen to the waveform. So yes, there will be lots of FFT there processing uh, that stuff. Okay, go check out the site. I don't know if this will work. We might. Yeah, and we have a lot of uh, other content coming up uh, mainly around the EEG but uh, ECG as well as you can tell and potentially getting that off uh, wearables and things uh, see what we can do with that this one's like a clinical medical grade stuff but I can't talk to it I think it just can be tossed in the rubbish bin but there is a lot of data sets that we are looking at uh, online uh, we have some downloaded data already open source data sets if you have any um, that you know about and you want me to look at or if you have your own data pop it up on github or any open source stuff i don't know i don't want to deal with lawyers later and i'm happy to have a look at it probably live stream like a first impression stuff so beware yeah, and my web page RPM at the moment is uh, quite high, so it's a good uh, good time to go uh, check the website. You'll be uh, supporting this project. What else we've got? Yeah, the, all the all the tools on the page they need the uh, updating. These four do not work at all. Currently, we'll be releasing uh, one. That's a irrelevant ad. Uh, we'll be releasing one that uh, combining fuzzy logic and um, po -po 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 -po. and this uh, game. Where's the game? This one, ECG game. So that's what we're currently doing. Hopefully, it actually starts uh, working. It kind of works. Yeah, it's just uh, modifying a few things and we'll be releasing on the side so you can play against the machine. Fuzzy logic is set theory. I don't know what do you mean by set theory, but uh, hey, can you give a quick overview of fuzzy logic? How is it related to set theory? I don't think it's set theory. It's a, it's a, like a signal detection theory, maybe. Is that what you mean? And can you also give an overview of what we did today? No, you wouldn't know, would you? Because we restarted the thing several times and we'll give it a go yeah i don't want it to talk it's annoying isn't it when the robot is talking i just can't read myself but uh, we'll find a bit on fuzzy logic and set theory maybe yeah this one anyway it's meant to be explainable ai a explainable machine uh, machine learning in uh, Python, it's uh, fairly straightforward. There's a Python library for it that anyone can use. It's called uh, SK Fuzzy and uh, Bob's your uncle. Uh, essentially, you need to design your uh, membership functions. Clear. Yeah, you design those uh, membership functions, which we do here. 
we do this for multiple parameters so in this uh, ecg waveform this is synthetic waveform you know the bot keeps telling me oh be careful with uh, publishing personal information whatever well, it's uh, synthetic it's no one's uh, ecg so we're looking at uh, the number of positive and uh, negative peaks in this case two and one we look at the amplitude it's a um, the amplitude is calibrated uh, normalized between zero and one we look at our peak sharpness so um, in theory it's uh, finding our peak uh, it's a simple algorithm nothing like uh, yeah nothing like this pen tomkins algorithm and stuff i didn't use it because i think it's assuming you have multiple uh, wave um, you know continuous waveform whereas we only have one uh, one of those uh, ECG bits uh, coming once uh, once at a time. That's kind of different. I don't know how that algorithm pro probably would not work. And then we right. So the, for the sharpness, yeah, point uh, four two for this one, point four for that one, and we have another example where it should be like point one or so. So like less uh, sharp. You can by the way already can go play this game it's available for you anyway we're look, uh, looking at the uh, peak sharpness oh where is it yeah most of them are 0. 0.42 and one of them should be different that's that's well that's all that you will see it's nothing nothing fancy anyway yeah there's a bunch of tools that will need uh, some more uh, work yeah there probably would have been uh, much uh, fft in this one as well it's a cross coherence between two channels and showing you power spectral density for you can select this is a uh, 16 channel data so you can select your channel to a uh, detrending and show you coherence value so essentially how similar or different the two channels are and yes there will be fft somewhere in the in the processing of this data and yeah this tool doesn't look great we'll have to redo it yeah this this peak here in coherence essentially shows that uh, at that specific frequency there is something going on between the two channels you can't really see it from the time series uh, you can't really see it from the power spectral density but you can see it in the uh, cross coherence function so essentially if this peak is really high you know to go look at that uh, frequency and there is something going on there and then um, this probably the this data is seizure uh, epileptic seizure so eeg while the subject having a seizure so if you have any any um, strong uh, correlation between the two channels which can be measured as a cross coherence between the two then you know the well potentially that the seizure is just happening at both uh, channels at the same time you can see how it changes when you increase the time window yeah there's something happening at that uh, frequency so it essentially could be used for seizure detection or something yeah this is where i'm using a lot of electricity because i should limit the window size there okay this gets stuck that's the kind of stuff i need to fix so yeah this was uh probably from a year ago i have to go back and uh, revisit it the what's uh, higher on the page been uh, develop more recently so probably will work better as well well i might just sign out bye